Hello, I am the masked electron. I am just an anonymous electron with many years of experience I wish to share. Thank you for clicking on this video. Let's begin today's topic. If you are looking to purchase an SEM or FIB, never under any circumstances buy a Tescan. I will explain why. Tescan began making electron microscopes behind the Iron Curtain in Czechoslovakia the 1950s. I personally have a lot of admiration for the Czech engineering community during this time. Even under communism, they were able to turn out fantastic pieces of design in numerous different industries. However, after communism fell, Tescan was reformed and began selling its new inexpensive SEMs to the world. These instruments have since gained a notoriously poor track record ever since. It appears many of the Tescan models available today have barely changed from the models originally designed in the early 1990s. So why would someone purchase a Tescan? The main reason is price. They are the lowest priced electron microscopes currently on the market. JEOL used to hold that title, but Tescan has worked hard to be even cheaper. Tescan is able to sell their SEMs at a very low price because they are very cheaply designed and built. The result of this is that they are also very unreliable. Talk to any Tescan owner, and they will likely give you a long list of failures they have experienced with their instrument. As an illustration, I have heard it said that Tescan does not actually make electron microscopes, but instead they make very large paperweights that only look like microscopes. Whilst an unreliably built instrument is bad, without a competently staffed service organization, no electron microscope will be any good. Sadly, I have heard no good things about Tescan's ability to repair their own broken instruments. The bottom line is that Tescan instruments break often, and when they do, they can stay broken for some time. Someone in the United States relayed to me what their experience with the Tescan service organization is like. I believe it is representative. They told me this. The instrument will go down on a very regular basis. They will place a call to the service organization. Then they must wait for Tescan to call them back. I was told that Tescan will call them back, quote, it seems whenever they feel like it, unquote, which could be several days to more than a week. Once Tescan finally calls them back, they can then schedule a time for a service engineer to come on site, which will not be immediate. Even then, once a service engineer shows up to diagnose the issue, it is unknown if he will be able to fix the issue or not. Often, failed parts go unreplaced for long periods of time. Why is that? I have heard a rumor as to why Tescan has so few replacement parts available. I heard this from a well-placed source who was in a position to know if it were true or not. However, I cannot confirm it, so please treat it as a rumor, and not as fact. Also, I will preface this information with this caveat. Since COVID-19 hit, all manufacturers everywhere are suffering from parts and materials shortages, especially semiconductors. I understand that. This information was told to me long before COVID hit, and many Tescan owners can attest to the fact that replacement parts for their instruments were scarce long before COVID. The rumor is that the Tescan factory in Czech Republic has limited manufacturing capability. They must choose to either build new microscopes, or replacement parts for existing microscopes. They can't do both. Tescan has allegedly made the calculated decision to prioritize the production of new instruments, and only to make replacement parts when they can find the time. The business rationale for this is simple. If Tescan sells a new instrument, the transaction brings money into the organization. If you provide a replacement part to a customer, that does not bring money into the organization. As a result, spare parts are very slow to come out of the factory, and customers who need them are put on a waiting list. As a customer, this would be very frustrating to learn, if true. After all, you paid for this microscope and probably a service contract, yet the company is deciding not to make the replacement part you need for the next several months. Whilst I don't know if this is true, it would explain a lot. I have known of Tescan instruments, both SEMs and FIBs, that have sat idle for over six months while waiting a replacement part. In one case I heard of, it took over a year for the required part to finally show up. Whether or not this information about their decision to prioritize new instruments over replacement parts is true, the lack of replacement parts, and the incredible length of downtime on Tescan instruments has damaged their reputation severely worldwide. Their poor reliability hangs over them like a shadow. One piece of news I can share is that Tescan has just released its new 4 DSTEM, their first modern entry into the world of TEMs. The rumor regarding this instrument, is that it was designed by a group of former Thermo Fisher engineers, which would make sense, since both of their factories are located in Czech Republic. Whilst this new instrument claims to be a novel approach for ATEM, we will just have to wait and see how it performs with users in the field. Even though I always enjoy a novel approach to something, given Tescan's past 30-year track record, I would not want to be in the test group of the first Tensor owners. No microscopist I have ever met has been happy with their Tescan. Although I know there must be such people out there, I know of no one who has ever purchased a second Tescan. 
The message I wish to convey is this, because of these persistent reliability issues with Teskin instruments, I would never risk my organization and the work we had to do with the purchase of one. However, you are free to make your own decisions. Please leave your Teskin stories in the comments below, both good and bad. We would all like to hear them. I am the Masked Electron and these opinions are my own. I am not affiliated with any of the organizations mentioned in this video, nor have I been paid to say anything. All the information I have presented was either found by myself, or was shared with me by others in the EM community. Some of these things I have witnessed myself, and some of them were told to me by sources I deem reliable. If you found this useful, please like and comment, and share with your friends in the microscopy world. I believe more discussion about this subject would be positive. Thank you for watching.